Welcome back. Imagine living in a country where even sharing your faith or producing faith material in your own language could land you in prison for a long time. Iran is a country where Christians face these pressures daily. And for a Muslim who leaves Islam, the ultimate penalty is death. Maryam and Mazia were here born into Muslim families in Iran, but they both became Christians and met while studying Christian theology in Turkey. Returning to Iran, they began sharing their faith, even in the face of this sort of persecution. Then in 2009, they were arrested and put into one of Iran's most notorious prisons for 259 days. Even though they were sentenced to death, they were released and moved to America. Thank you so much for joining us. I just want to ask you, what sort of work were you doing that led to your arrest? Thank you so much for having us. Uh, it's about 15 years that uh, we converted to Christianity. At that time, we didn't know each other. And wow. it was in 2005 that uh, we met each other in Turkey for the first time for mm -hmm. studying theology courses, Yes, as you mentioned. And after uh, finishing our theology courses, we decided to return to Iran because we understood that we both had the same passion about our people, our country. And what, what was that passion? What uh, yeah, because if uh, people read our testimony in the book, they can see that how we met Jesus, how we tasted his love yes. and how we experienced him in our lives. That's why yes. we had this uh, passion. We, uh, we tasted this love and we wanted to give uh, this to our people to taste mm. the same thing that we taste. And that's that why passion for Jesus that yes, you wanted exactly. to share that with them. Exactly. Yes. And even though we knew that how much is dangerous to return to Iran, uh, because Iran, as you mentioned, is an Islamic country and mm. no one is allowed uh, to promote any religion except Islam. That's yes. why we decided to return to uh, Iran mm -hmm. and we started our first uh, mission and we started by uh, evangelizing uh, people by distributing Bibles. And yes. uh, we okay. called our pastor and they provide all those New Testaments for us. And we started the first mission uh, and distributing uh, those uh, New Testaments. Uh, for example, usually at night we carried about 140 New Testaments uh, in our backpack and visited yes. one area in uh, Tehran, the capital of Iran, and put yes. them in the mailboxes. So, so you, you two took the Bibles physically yourselves yes. and you just put them in letterboxes of exactly. houses or, okay. Exactly. Yep. And yes. uh, praise God, uh, after almost three years, we could distribute 20,000 20, New Testaments. 20,000 New Testaments. Yeah. And, and this is in Farsi? The uh, yeah, it's a small uh, New Testament that yes. uh, the uh, organization uh, that uh, uh, was in uh, London, they provided uh, yes. for us and yep. we started this mi mission in Tehran. And nothing uh, during that time nothing happened to us and God really protected us wow. uh, because it was very difficult uh, for dis, uh, distributing uh, those uh, New Testaments in Tehran but praise God that uh, nothing happened and we could finish this. We could distribute all those New Testaments wow. in different parts of uh, Tehran, the capital of Iran. Yes. And also after that we started two house churches. Uh, one of them okay. was among prostitutes and the other one among oh, young, wow. young people in our own apartment. Yeah. Young people that you can came into contact with or just in your apartment building? Uh, yeah, and it's it's another story. Uh, we believe that, you know, most of uh, Iranian uh, are just born as a Muslim and yes. they don't know too much about Islamic rules. Okay. Uh, and we believe that they are uh, tired of this government and these mm. Islamic rules. That's why when we evangelize uh, those people, they were very open and receptive to accept the message of salvation. Because uh, as you know, um, as we know, the message of salvation is, is about uh, grace and forgiveness, mm. uh, which is completely different from uh, uh, what uh, uh, they teach in Islam, uh, which is just about the punishment. Submission, yeah. doing yeah. respect. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And, 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 and the prostitutes, ministry to the prostitute, the house church that you started with them, how did that come about? Was that, it seems unusual in a country mm. It wasn't easy to find those people and uh, we just prayed and we started with two women because most of the video uh, in Iran, they do prostitution really? and that's why it's yes. not easy to recognize them. And uh, we just prayed and asked God to lead some people to us and we uh, met uh, a few of them and then mm -hmm. we start with uh, those people and then every day was growing. It was growing. Yeah. Yes. It, is it common for Christians to meet in house churches in in Iran? Yeah, it is. Um, actually, because there's 
15 years ago, it was just one building, one yes. building church in Tehran, capital of Te Iran. And uh, people from Muslim background could attend that church. Okay. And because the pastor would preach in Farsi, our language. Yes. But these days, the government even closed that church too. And okay. so people d cannot attend the church. That's why there are many house churches, underground churches in Iran. Yes. Now, tell us a little bit about um, your prison experience. What was the, I understand this is a very uh, sort of bad prison notoriously, you know, harsh and difficult. What was probably the worst experience that you had there? I can say, you know, from the beginning, uh, the day we got arrested, it was like a big shock for both of us yes. because we hadn't experienced such a thing in our lives. And yes. suddenly three guards um, attacked our apartment. They ransacked everywhere mm. and they took both of us with all our belongings, Bibles, Jesus movies, everything else that they had discovered and they transferred us first to a security police, then to another detention. Both of these places were awful places and mm. um, we had long hours of, hours of interrogation. Yes. We were threatened to physical torture mm. and we were in, in horrible places. For example, in the first detention, we had to sleep on freezing and filthy floor yes. with no carpet in winter. And uh, for days, we didn't have anything to eat or drink. We couldn't take a shower for 14 mm. days. We wow. couldn't even brush our teeth. And after 14 days, they transferred us to that uh, famous uh, prison, Evin Prison, yes. which is notorious for arresting, torturing, raping, and executing wow. of many innocent people. Wow. And they transferred us to that uh, prison for charges of apostasy, blasphemy, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. anti-government, and promoting Christianity in Iran. Yes, and, and you weren't anti-government, were you? You were just promoting Christianity, is that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, it's for in, in, in Iran, it's, um, you know, promoting Christianity is against is the government. Is anti-government, yeah. right, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what was the worst experience in the prison? Yeah, one of the most painful of our experiences in Evin prison was execution of prisoners with mm. whom we were living every day. Wow. And for example, one guard, uh, would come to the cell, take one prisoner, put them in solitary confinement, yes. and the day after that, we would hear that they executed them. And also they executed one of our best friends mm. who was a political prisoner. And you had contact with some of these prisoners, so you got to know people in we the were prison. Living yes, with we them. were living yeah. with them. living with them, and then they would disappear, mm, yeah. and then they were executed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I understand you felt ill? You weren't well, mm. sickness and all those mm. things happen in the prison as well. Yeah, I remember for almost, uh, I can say, eight months, uh, we were so sick and suffering yes. from uh, mm. difficult uh, physical problems. And in Evin prison, there is just a fall, uh, small uh, uh, building without uh, a small and dirty building, without yes. adequate equipment to treat prisoners. And uh, most of the time we were sick and there were some uh, doctors, they were prejudiced prisoners, uh, mm. pre pre prejudiced and Muslims. And they, uh, they refused to treat us because they believe wow. that if you convert from uh, Islam to any other religion, you are infidel and dirty. And most of the time we were suffering from physical problems. Wow. Well, you're obviously out of prison now and we're glad to have you with us, but we'll find out how you got out after this short break. Signs of the Times, a magazine for a world on the brink. And this month in Signs, what is the meaning of the Christian practice of tithing, the invisible influence of fathers on their children? Anne Thorpe, the Maori Queen of Cuisine, on fresh, healthful food, the importance of sunshine on your health. All in this month's Signs of the Times. Subscribe to Signs today and change your life. Have you heard the news? No matter what shade of musical taste you have, you might just find something that sings to you. It's all waiting to be discovered at saltamusic.com. Fresh and exciting original Christian music from Salta Music. So you think you've got your future all planned out, right? Or maybe you're not sure yet. What you want to do, who you want to be, but whatever path you choose to study, a great education matters. Because it doesn't just help you get a great job. It helps you prepare for what life can throw at you and live a great life. Avondale. It's education designed for life.
welcome back. We're here with Mariam and Mazia, and 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 you know, you were telling me before the break how you were in this terrible place, this prison. But how did you get out? You were only in there for mm -hmm. 259 days, and I know a lot of Christians in in countries like Iran around the world they go into prison for years or even decades. They just disappear, and the government keeps them away. What was it that enabled you to 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 come out mm -hmm. of this place? Uh, we believe that one of the most important uh, reason that we got released is because of the God grace and the, the victory that He gave God's us. God's grace, yeah. Mm. Uh, but the second reason was uh, from people's support. We heard, uh, mm. for example, uh, for the first few months that we were in prison, uh, we, we didn't have any connection with the world outside and we thought yes. that we completely forgotten. Yes. But uh, yes. because we were not allowed to call to our families. And uh, after that, when we call our sisters, we heard that many Christians from different parts of the world they were supporting us either by praying and sending letters to prison, which was so encouraging for both of us. And also we heard from some guards that we had many letters every day and they were angry about this. And they uh, told us that every yes. day you have lots of letters, uh, yes. which is more than our official letters. And uh, they had to change their behavior with us because of all these supports, right. because they could see that we are not alone and um, Christians are watching them. And uh, there is a unity among Christians. Christians around exactly. the world. Exactly. We're behind you, connect, exactly. connecting with your cause. Yeah. And also the Iranian government were under so much pressure from some uh, yes, international okay. and influential uh, organizations such as United Nations, Amnesty yes. International. And also we heard uh, even Pope from Vatican send a letter to wow. Iranian government and ask for our release. And that's why we believe that the Iranian government had to release us, be yes. unlike their desires, because of the politics they wanted to show that there is religious freedom in Iran, which yes. is not true. And as you know, still uh, there are many Christians who are in that prison and suffering for their faith. Right. And so I guess, what can we do? What can we as Christians here in Australia, how can we help uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ in Iran? Mm -hmm. You know, after that experience that we had in prison, after we could see many injustices in prison, we yes. both feel responsible and we feel that God had put this burden on our hearts in order to help our brothers and sisters. And that's why we always encourage Christians uh, to support those people, to be family to them and to start, uh, you know, um, praying for them. And mm. also, you know, we, we, we believe that there is power in our prayers because yes. we pray in Jesus' name. We always yes. encourage people to keep praying for those people because mm -hmm. when we were in prison, we, we could feel the power of mm -hmm. prayers. And exactly. also we believe there are many practical ways we can help okay. by, yep. by writing letters and sending them to prison, yes. by signing petitions, by yes. talking to our governments, to politicians, by talking to our friends, our families, and let them know what is happening in countries like Iran and let them know about persecution. Yes. And there are many ways I, I believe we can get involved, but the most important thing that thing is that we should know that we are all parts of one body. And as Bible says, if one part suffer, every part should suffer with it. And yes. we are responsible for our mm. brothers and sisters. Mm. In terms of Christians in the West, we, we often um, have it very easy. There's freedom mm. of religion. We have the choice to, if we distributed mm. New Testaments, we wouldn't be thrown in jail for that. Um, and yet Jesus says, Blessed are the persecuted who are righteous because they will inherit mm. the kingdom. Do you feel blessed by this experience? Do you feel that there's something that you've received in your Christian journey that maybe us Christians in the West are missing out on? And how can we have that experience in our, in our, in our journey? Yes, we believe that uh, God had a purpose to put us in that uh, difficult uh, place uh, and uh, that's why uh, Mariam explained uh, we saw those injustices and that's why we feel responsible about our yes. brothers and sisters. That's why we encourage uh, people who live in a free country like Australia and other countries, United States. Uh, we usually tell people, please don't take your freedom for granted because mm. the freedom that you have in your countries is really a blessing and valuable gift from God. And we should appreciate this uh, freedom and also we should use this freedom to help our brothers and sisters, not, not just for living for ourselves and enjoy uh, for ourselves, we can use this freedom to help our brothers and sisters who are suffering in uh, because of the name of Jesus. Yes. And you know, uh, we always praise God for 
for this experience, for him wow. letting us pass through this experience because in prison we had great opportunities to share the message yes. of salvation with many women and we could okay. see God's miracles and we could see how God was working through us. Mm. And that's why we praise God for this opportunity. And it was, as you mentioned, it was a blessing for us and for other people. And we, we, we believe it was really an honor for us to suffer for our faith. Um, during those nine months that we were in prison. Wow. Also, we believe that God used this persecution today to send his message, to spread his message through to our story. Yeah. Yes. And, and we praise and God for this opportunity. You're still, I mean, you're traveling right now in Australia mm -hmm. to, to share your story and yes. to raise awareness. Yes, exactly. I, yeah. Actually, we started this tour from Europe. Yes. We started from Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Then yes. we went to South Africa and Namibia. And Australia is the sixth country. And after here, we will go to UK. Wow. And we believe that, you know, physically, sometimes we feel tired, but we can see that God is working mm -hmm. and Holy Spirit is talking yes. to people's hearts. That's that's the, what, you know, encourage us to keep, to, to keep going and to keep sharing this message. And you're taking it around the world, literally yeah, exactly. you're taking it around the world. Um, this may seem like a, a strange question, but do you feel like you're closer to God now through this experience? Or do you feel like the times you were actually in the prison, you actually felt God's grace more? You know, physically. Uh, when we were in prison, I can say for almost, uh, almost nine months, we didn't have Bible with us, but we could experience God uh, during yes. that time. Every day uh, we learn how to live with Bible every day. You know, uh, before we got arrested, we had Bible, we could uh, read Bible every day, but in inside the prison was completely different. We mm. could uh, experience, uh, and that's why uh, we usually tell people it's uh, better to live with God, to live with Bible every day rather than just uh, just following the religious rules and just reading Bible without getting ad anything from uh, the Bible. And that's why uh, we, we believe that uh, we had um, better experience inside the prison mm. because we could uh, uh, touch uh, Jesus, we could experience mm. him. Uh, for example, there is a verse in Bible that says uh, uh, you should forgive your enemies and pray for them. And yes. we faced those uh, verses in prison. Uh, it was very difficult. It Every day you had them. to yeah. face yeah. your enemies, exactly. as it were. Exactly. There were uh, people who insulting us and uh, calling yes. us dirty Christian. But yes. uh, sometimes I can say it was very difficult to forgive those people, especially the people mm. who executed our best friend. But mm. uh, we learn how to, uh, you know, forgive those people and uh, pray for them. And because of all these behaviors, we could see the difference inside the prison. And there were some guards that they came to us and apologized because of their behaviors. Mm. Uh, um, and uh, they ask us to pray uh, yeah. for them. And we believe that it was miracles because uh, we try to show prisoners that um, who Jesus is, what his teachings are uh, by our behaviors yes. rather than just our words and repeating words. And that's mm. why we could see the changes inside the prison. Wow. Now, your ministry now is to travel around and, and to, to, to raise awareness. But what about your personal ministry? Are you still delivering Bibles, starting church groups in America? Is it as easy there as it was in Iran? Or what, what's your experience now? Now, as you know, we are living in the U.S. Yes. and we are students. Yep. We are studying international law okay. in order to be advocate for our people in Iran and wow. to be a voice for them. Yes. And still we are traveling. We are speaking in different churches, conferences, schools in order to bring awareness and be a voice for those people who do not have any voice in our country. And as, as you mentioned, in America also, we have great opportunities to talk to people about yes. Jesus yes. because there are many people who are just born as a Christian in America, but they don't know Jesus. Mm. Especially in a school, we have great opportunity to yes. share the message of salvation with our classmates, with our professors. And we believe that there are many people in America who need to hear about Jesus too. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. We're almost out of time. Can you just tell us, um, and our viewers, how do we find out more information? How do we find out more about your story and what we can do to help? As you mentioned, our book is called Captive in Iran and it's yes. available everywhere online, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. And also we heard that um, they, people can find the book on Open Doors website and also they okay. can find more information about how they can get involved and how they can support their brothers and sisters by, by writing letters, sending letters to prison. Fantastic. Well, the website was just there on your screen. Mazie and Miriam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and you. We'll be back after this short break. 